Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful multi-strand bracelet really easy, this ring even easier, and these beautiful earrings that are so simple and inexpensive to make using supplies from our sponsor, Panda Hall. You can find them online at www.pandahall.com, and I'm going to have links to all the supplies that I used in the video description, so you can check that out, and also some coupon codes to save you 10 or 20 bucks on your next order at pandahall.com. So let's go to the table and I'll show you how it's done. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make today is this earring. So it's really pretty. It uses the little pendant um, piece and a dome from Panda Hall and these other beads as well. And then I just use my own um, earring wire that I had in my stash. So first we're going to make the earring and then I'll show you how to make the little bobble inside. You're going to need a head pin and I just have these little one inch head pins here and I recommend that you get like a, a longer head pin because they're just easier to work with but a one inch one will suffice. So just put on your two beads. I have the um, imitation um, Austrian crystal and a little pressed bicone. And then what you want to do is take some small needle nose pliers and make a small 90 degree bend right um, near the tip. So it looks like that. All right, now what you want to do is trim it about a quarter inch from the bend. We're just going to make a simple loop here. So I'm just going to give that a trim so it's about a quarter of an inch long. And hopefully this doesn't slip out of my hand because I just put lotion on. So I find it's very hard to work with jewelry after you put lotion on, but it's so dry this time of year. So then I'm going to grip the, uh, the, the uh, wire right at the tip, okay? And then just roll it back. You just let go and re-grip when you need to. And then you get a beautiful loop. I like to grab it with my the flat. There's a little flat part in your three-in-one tool pliers. And I just grip it there. I'm not sure who made these because I've got them a long time ago. And there is our little, our little simple loop. And then you want to grab your ear wire. We'll set that down there for a second. And um, I find it's a little bit easier to do it this way. Just uh, You just want to twist this open. Never pull it apart like a U. You always just want to twist it just so it's kind of like a C. You see that? And then we're going to slip on the bead, the little um, simple beaded portion like that. And then we're simply going to twist it back closed, okay? There. Now we just need to attach our uh, pendant piece onto the bottom. So again, I'm going to open up this loop. As long as you're gentle and you don't pull it open like a U, you just kind of twist it open. You can open it and close these and not worry about it too much. If you if it feels too stiff and you want more of a dangle, you can always um, add a jump ring here if you prefer. So just keep that in mind and then I'm just going to twist that closed. I have plenty of room here. And um, so there we have our earring portion. Now to make the little glass bobble, and we're going to do this several times because we're going to need one for our ring as well. Um, and I have some prepared here. What you're going to do, and I'm just going to cut away these because those are already done. You just find a, some pretty scrabble paper or washi paper that you like. Then take your little dome. This is the bigger one that fits in the ring. And you want to use some glue. And my favorite for this is Aileen's Julet. You could probably use um, Mod Podge or some other clear drying water-based glue and find a part of the design that you like and I think maybe I'll do this little flower here and just push it down. You want to push it and smush it so that you can see it makes contact. Now it's not going to be perfectly clear right now if you're using a water-based glue because it's going to um, it's going to dry clear. As long as it's still wet you can see it's a little milky so don't cut this out until it's completely dry. So you do that for the pieces for your earrings and your ring, whatever you want to do. And then when they're dry, they're going to look like this. And to cut them out, simply take some paper crafting scissors and you, look how I'm holding my scissors. I'm holding them at an angle, so I'm kind of slightly undercutting it. Okay, so that way there's not going to be any excess showing from the edges. And there you get that little bobble. And this exact same thing we're doing for the, uh, the tiny one. It almost dis it disappeared on me. Here it is. We're going to do that for this one too. Just trim around here. There. And then I'm going to use the um, same adhesive to glue this into the frame and I'm hoping that it marries up well enough. So since I put my glue in this fine tip applicator bottle, it's really easy to go in there and put a nice bead of glue around. And then I'm just going to, uh, oh yes, yeah, so you always want to replace your little, your little cap in here. 
and then I'm just going to plop this in and then leave it be while it dries. Oops, I got a little bit too much in there, but that's going to dry clear, so I'm really not going to worry about it, but I'll bring this up a little closer to you. And you can see that lovely little pair of earrings. I think that's going to look so pretty and vintage to wear. All right, so of course we just did the same thing that we're going to use for the ring. And this uh, ring set was also from Panda Hall. Uh, most of these supplies I'm using are from Panda Hall, except for the uh, the little ear wires and this glue. I got this glue at the craft store. And um, I'm putting in a fairly generous amount of my adhesive in there. And then I'm just going to plop this right down in and I'm going to give it a little push to make sure it's contacting well. And then I just need to let it dry and there I've got that lovely ring which is adjustable so that would be a really fun gift or craft fair item to make so I'm just going to set this um, I'm actually going to kind of set it like that so it can dry actually let's put that out of the way over there so it can dry and not um, and not be tipped or bothered so I was looking at some of the uh, beads to design my jewelry and it was an assortment so I had these beads here and I also had these so what I did was I looked at the paper that I wanted to use as my pendant and I said okay what colors do I like I like the indigo color I like the orange I like the peach um, there was no greens in here but I knew I wanted some greens. so I looked through and I put all my beads out and then I started taking away beads and then I found that this composition these colors look really elegant together they're bohemian but they look really elegant but when these colors were added to that they looked just kind of cheap next to each other so, and it didn't look very sophisticated at all it looked like a skittles box had thrown up on my project so i took out the brighter colors i'll use those on other projects and what remains are the colors that i'm going to use on this and i want to make a multi-strand bracelet because i like those and i thought it would be kind of a fun project and also easy so let me first put that close that all right oh I keep all my glues for beading in a tin because um, I want to make sure I can quickly look through and choose the right glue for the right project and I do have just a small bottle of julep my other bottle of julep my big bottle is with my sewing stuff because I tend to use it more for sewing but I like to keep all my stuff together so I can find it when I need it all right so to figure out what size bracelet I want I'm going to measure my wrist and I have very small wrists and I don't want my bracelet to fall off so if I measure around my wrist is um, about six inches so that's I probably want about six inches of bead and then I'll have a little extra room for the clasp and that will be able to be put on and off pretty easily. I'm going to use this stainless steel wire and most of it's not really not going to show so I don't really need the uh, the that brassy color bronze I think it's called so I'm going to do I'm gonna just going to do the steel and I'm going to cut off 10 inch pieces because I want to make sure I have sufficient room to be able to um, to attach my my toggles I'd rather have like a couple extra I'd rather waste a couple inches of wire than have to recut a whole piece of wire or struggle with um, with wire that's too short and I'm gonna cut three pieces of this and uh, this spool of wire was like I don't know 70 cents so you don't have to worry you don't have to be too stingy when you can buy your supplies as at an affordable price such as they have at Panda Hall all right so now I've got my three strands here now what I think I'm gonna do first is actually attach one end of my clasp and I think I'm going to attach the um, the the round part the loop and I've got that right here and it's a pretty little pretty little flower and I'm going to simply grab some top grab some crimp beads that's what these are here I better set this somewhere else or I'm gonna just I'm gonna destroy that before it's done so I'm gonna set my wire down actually while I'm waiting while I'm working these little tools are handy they're just called little bead bugs and you can just snip them on there and they will hold your wire and your beads while you're working so that way I won't lose my wire all right I do want to match my um, my crimps here so I'm gonna use some of these uh, antique brass I'm just gonna pour out a couple there we go and I am going I'm kind of I'm kind of um nervous about my bead wires and I do not like to risk them so I am kind of a little overkill on my on my beads so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a crimp on each one of these wires so that way if one wire snaps I'm not going to lose the entire bracelet I'm just going to have one wire to repair and I'm not going to have to be hunting beads down for you know if you have three all three strands go that's going to be really difficult to uh to gather up and fix so I am just I just tend to be a little bit uh, a little bit nervous with with the wires all right so I've got my strands uneven here so I'm gonna bring all my strands to an even even length 
I'm gonna slide my crimp beads down because remember I gave myself extra room and I'm gonna put the end on and this is gonna be the same process we'll do at the end when we attach the other part of our toggle after we're done stringing our bracelet. Okay so now I have pulled all my strands through. Now I simply need to take the end wires here and go right back through my crimp beads. I just basically want to make sure I'm going to get a really nice connection here because we don't want our jewelry to fall apart. Some people would go and just put everything through one bead but these are really too small for that. These need to, these kind of need their own their own bead on their own wire and it does give you a little safety and you know I don't want my jewelry to fall apart. I don't want to give somebody a present and then have them like have to put it back together again. Let's look at this close up as we close the crimp bead. Your first step will be to use the first channel in your crimping your crimping pliers right there. It kind of looks like a heart if I close it. Can you see that? It looks like a heart kind of sideways there the way I was holding it and you just want to squash it with that and it makes the bead flatten out and kind of look like a U. It's dipped in on one side and it's rounded on the other. So then what you want to do is hold it sideways, go in with the first notch on your pliers and squish it close. Sometimes it takes two squishes, you know, if you kind of didn't grab it quite tight enough and then you have a nice tidy little crimp bead and you'll see like a little seam on one side. And that is how you do that. Now when I go to thread the beads on here, I'm going to want to have my beads go over both of those strands. That'll keep it from poking, uh, poking the wearer, but it will also give you a little extra room. If something ever happens and that crimp bead breaks, it'll give you a little room to, uh, to repair it. So keep that in mind. Um, if it does keep working out or you have one little piece that's kind of coming out from between some beads, you can trim that off later, but keep them there for right now. Now we're going to begin stringing on the beads. I've laid out some beads in a pleasing pattern and I kind of wanted them to stagger a bit so you'll notice that I didn't, that I'm using three channels on my bead design board and I didn't line up my beads. I want them kind of offset. So I'm going to just begin by threading on some of the beads on my board. I may need to add more beads as I go because these rondelles sometimes on the bead board they lay on their sides and it won't give me an absolutely accurate uh, representation of, uh, of how much space they're going to take up, but just keep stringing them on one by one. I'm sure you may have a uh, faster way to do this, but working with a video, I can't get my face right down in there so I can see closely. So I tend to, uh, I tend to, um, tend to take a little bit longer. All right, now that I have a few on there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back here and make sure they trap the the tail down. There, that way, look how nice and neat that looks. Okay, there's no wire sticking out. And I'm just going to go through and continue stringing on these beads. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of those strands that I put on. I have all those strands over there. I'm going to do that for every single strand. So go ahead and um, start stringing your beads. To avoid spillage when you get to the end of one of the strands, make sure you put something on here to stop it in case the beads want to go on you. You could use a little piece of masking tape or you can use a little bead bug like this or, or any sort of spring, just something that will keep your beads from going on an adventure without you. Continue stringing on the other strands of beads, just the way we did uh, with that first one. I have two strands beaded and one left to go, so keep on stringing, people! You have your uh, bracelet strung. You want to make sure it's going to fit and you're also going to make, want to make sure you have some small beads on the end so that when you go to put your toggle through the uh, beads will move enough and be able to fit through the opening of the um, of the loop part of your toggle so that it will uh, it'll work easily. So I've wrapped this around my wrist and determined that it's just long enough. I don't want it, I don't want it too long so it's very important that you measure, you know, you kind of put it around your wrist to measure. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, toggle on this first strand. The other two strands are secured with the little bead bugs there so um, this will be a little easier. I am going to put on the one crimp bead. This is the same thing we did at the beginning of the video to attach all three except I'm going to do it one at a time here. And you know, if that's easier for you, you can do that to put your stringing wire onto your toggle to begin with. If one at a time makes more sense and is easier, you go right ahead and do that. It's all about, you know, whatever works for you. 
And now I don't want to leave too much slack here, but I'm going to go through the bead. I don't want to lose it. So I think this bead is big enough that it's not going to slide in between the uh, in the hole of the bicone that's happened before with me with projects that I'm working on and it's kind of difficult. And I'm going to feed it right into those other beads while I'm at it. I want it kind of tight enough so that I can uh, bury that end. Once you get it going in there, it usually will feed itself down through the other beads. All right, so that's what we have right now. It looks like a little teardrop. And we're going to do the same thing. And you can see where it's coming, where the end's coming out. And that's all right. I can trim that at that point. It's sticking out there, but that's that's fine. I can actually give it a little tug if I want, make sure it's nice and snug. All right, so back to our crimping pliers. We're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We are going to go in on the first, uh, the first, hold, first little spot that looks like a heart. Then we're going to squash it down flat. There we go. I'm just gonna look it over a good, make sure I've got a good connection. It looks like I do, but I just wanna be sure. And then I'm just gonna trim that little tail that's sticking out. And there is one strand done. So if you're making a single strand bracelet, you could just, you know, do it like that. That would be totally beautiful, but I really like the uh, triple strand. So we're going to work on our next strand. I'm going to add a couple beads to this because I know I need two more beads in this composition to work. The crimp bead on. And this is going to go through that toggle, which already has one strand through it already. I want to zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. Then we're going to feed it back through the crimp bead and we're going to try to get through, go back through those beads as well so we can hide our tail. If you have a hard time with this and you just want to trim it off close, you can do that. I just like to do the do it this way because then I have the extra tail in there. If the anything should happen and the bead, the bracelet should break, um, I can always I can repair it with that extra extra bit of uh, material there. So we're gonna crunch it with our we're gonna squash it with that first column in our crimper. Then we're gonna tip it on its side, which you know they tend to want to move on you at this stage because you got all those beads in there. And we're just going to catch it on that first little column the, in your crimping pliers. If it doesn't move on us. And squash it down again. A nice good connection there, hopefully. And then we'll trim off the little tail here with our little flush cutters. All right, do the same thing for the last one. Take our end off and I'm going to add a couple more beads because I know I need them. And a little crimp bead. This is such a value for the crimp beads to have all those beads for $3 or so. I'll put a list of all the materials I used in the video description with links over to Panda Hall um, so you can get the exact beads that I have if you want them. Um, another alternative would be to um, replace some of the glass beads for acrylic if you've got arthritis or if you don't want a heavy bracelet this isn't that heavy but you know wearing it all day it may maybe seem a little heavier than just you know wearing it for an hour or two um you can mix mix and match you can add some um acrylic beads in here and it'll give the overall illusion of them all being crystal but um but it will really save on the weight and also save on the expense of um of creating the bracelet so something to, to consider i do that a lot with necklaces just because I love the look of a really sparkly shiny necklace, but it's um, it's it's heavy, and I don't want to have so much weight. It gives me a headache sometimes. All right, we got our crimp bead on. We're gonna crimp it. Go on the first channel and give it a squash. Go on the outside channel and give it a pinch. And there we have our finished bracelet. I think it's pretty. And we close it. We just slide it through there. See how we needed a little bit of wiggle room to get it into the toggles like that. That's going to be so pretty to wear. You could wear it casually with jeans and a t-shirt, or you could wear it 
um, a little more dressy with um, with any sort of holiday party dress or you know whatever you want. It's something you can wear year round too. I want to make sure I have my clasp facing out and I'm just going to latch this up. I have to hold it against my body to do that. <laughs> or you can have your have your husband latch it for you. And there we go, just like that. I love that the clasp is also like a focal point because it's so pretty and decorative. And then you've got all these beautiful shiny beads. So no matter what angle you're looking at it from, it's totally pretty. And uh, my glue isn't quite dry on my ring yet, uh, but I will make sure I share a photo of the entire set together. And then of course, these really pretty earrings. I want to thank Panda Hall for sponsoring our video today. You can find them online at www.pandahall.com. Check out the links below for wonderful discount codes and coupons and also direct links to all the products that I used in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.